Welcome back. This September has been really unlike any other with confusion and indecision surrounding sending kids back to school. Uh, parents have a lot on their plate. So here to ease just a little bit of that worry with uh, a few homeschooling success tips is learning strategist, Joanne Domenico. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Joanne, boy, do we need you now more than ever. Depending on where you are in the country, there's a good amount of students, my daughter being one of them, that is going to be homeschooled. So we're starting a lot of us from scratch. So what um, are your tips and where we start to set us up for success, especially if you have a parent who's also trying to work from home at the same time? So a great place to start would be with self-care. So think about it. Our kids have been out of school for so long, so that means going to bed really late, being on screens really long, not getting as much exercise as they need to. Uh, so we want to really optimize their brains to get back into learning mode. So I recommend focusing on three key areas of self-care. First, sleep. Are they getting enough? This is super important because their brains can't learn when they're exhausted, right? So sleep is important for focus and concentration, but also for mood and motivation. So think about how you feel when you didn't get enough sleep, right? You're quite cranky. So our children need to be getting the recommended amount. So according to Health Canada, that is uh, nine to 11 hours for ages five to 13. For teens age 14 to 17, they need eight to 10 hours. So the second one is diet, okay? so. Diet is also a big one. Our brains use a lot of fuel when we're learning and we wanna ensure that we're giving our kids' brains healthy fuel. So that means fruits, vegetables. And I know with my little guy, sometimes that's a battle. So I have a rule at my home. You have to have something on your plate at every meal that has one ingredient like apple carrot, right? Um, mm. So we've incorporated that. <laughs> it works well, um, as well as hydration, because getting enough water also helps to keep our brains alert and awake. And then lastly, exercise. So think about what a typical school day would look like. There would be morning recess, lunchtime, afternoon recess, gym class. So when we're learning from home, we don't always have these same opportunities for movement. My recommendations for parents here really vary because there's so many variables, like how many kids do you have? Um, what grade are they? How much support do they need? And what's the nature of your work? Not everybody's work will allow you to, to support your child. But I have three key things that I like to focus on here, and that's uh, flex, shift, and rewind. It sounds like a dance. So, so first, <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're able to flex your time, so meaning if you have to work a seven hour work day, then maybe you uh, break that up. So you have a few hours with your child and then maybe you do a few hours earlier in the day. So you're still getting in your seven hours of work. It's just not seven hours in a row. So if that's an option, if you have that flexibility with your work, that can be helpful. For shift, if there's another adult in your home, so whether that's a partner, a spouse, maybe an older sibling or a relative, that can help you uh, by creating shifts. And then lastly, rewind. So something that I love to do is times when I know I'm not able to work with my son, but I want him to still be productive, I actually rewind and give him stuff from the previous school year. So maybe I give him curriculum from a grade two level, even though he's now in grade three. You do have older children and perhaps they are more independent learners. But in my case, my daughter is six years old and because she's going to be doing online school, uh, this is a whole different ball game. So what tips do you have for me or parents who also have younger children? Yes, well, for younger children, I recommend following the three C's. So the first C is consistency. So having a predictable schedule with easy to learn routines is super important for younger children. Mm -hmm. Younger children actually thrive on routine. And I saw on the CDC website, according to the CDC, children need uh, consistency and predictability in order to feel safe and secure. I recommend creating the schedule with your child once you find out what their um, needs are based on the school, when they have to be online, etc. But any other educational activities that you want to do with them, let them uh, be part of that decision because for younger children, you get a lot more cooperation and buy-in when they feel like they're in control. So the schedule is key. There's so many different examples online of different schedules you can create, uh, you know, doing whatever works best for your home. The next C is for collaboration. So think about it. When your child was in school, pre-COVID that is, they would usually be seated at a desk with four children. There's always a teacher. Sometimes there's volunteers in the room. So they always had someone to model their learning tasks for them. They had someone to ask questions. They had someone to encourage them when they were struggling. So now 
that's you, right? So you mm -hmm. really have to um, treat learning like you're there to collaborate with them. And the last C is creativity. So we have to ensure we're keeping the fun in learning, right? If you treat learning like a tedious chore, it becomes exactly that, right? So we want our children to be fascinated in what they're learning. We want them to be find mystery and excitement in what they're learning. My kids, Blaze and Dash, are older than Mel's daughter, Maikeza, and uh, I still have concerns. So what are your tips for parents of older kids who maybe aren't so confident that their teens and preteens are independent learners? For older kids, I have a bunch of C's as well. I have four. My first C for older kids is cell phone. So I really recommend that parents have a good idea of how much time their teens are actually spending on their screens. In my experience, they will always underestimate, oh, maybe it's, you know, three, four hours. The numbers I'm seeing now are quite scary. I'm seeing eight, nine, 10, 11 hours a day, more than some of us spend Oof. working our full-time jobs. Yeah, so Oof. I really encourage you to set up a system that allows you and your team to monitor and limit their unproductive screen time usage. The second C is about checklists. So for younger children, I recommended the schedules that works well, but for older children, I recommend the use of checklists instead because they allow for more autonomy and flexibility. So the beauty of the checklist is it will tell us what they have to do, but they get to determine when they're going to do it, which most teens will appreciate. Um, the hmm. next C is for check-ins. So what I found is some parents really have no idea how their child is doing. So having a beginning or end of the day check-in can be really helpful. So what classes do you have today? Do you have any assignments or tests coming up? You know, what resources do you need? Do you need any help from me? And then at the end of the day, how did it go today? Were you as productive as you would have liked to have been? How can we make tomorrow different? And my bonus C for teens are contracts. So creating a contract at the beginning of the year that sort of talks about like, what are your goals this uh, semester or quadmester? Uh, you know, what grades are we sort of aiming for? And if you don't achieve those, those goals by the middle of the term, then we agree that we're gonna look into some additional support. Okay, so I'm learning a lot from these acronyms and we're gonna end with the last big one that you say is the one maybe most parents should abide by as we're trying to tackle this homeschooling situation. And it is the acronym LEARN, L-E-A-R-N. So um, if you can quickly get us through these starting with the letter L. So the L is for lessons learned. So from March to June, we were all in the same boat and many of us found it really challenging. So I really mm -hmm. recommend you reflect on what went well and what didn't go well and why. So for example, if you got a lot of resistance when you tried to do work with your child certain times of the day, maybe you need to change and do more work in the morning when motivation and willpower are a little bit higher, right? So it's really just about reflection so that you can be more prepared this time around and things can hopefully run a bit smoother. E stands for educate and the importance of parents being educated on how and when their kids are learning. So please take us through this one. It's important to know when and if their teaching is going to be live synchronous instruction where you're having live face-to-face -face instruction via a screen with the teacher or asynchronous where they're going to be learning at their own time. So finding out those so that you can build your schedule and then how, so what platform were they, will they be using? And especially for the younger children, it's important that you as the parent also are familiar with that platform because guess what? You're now their IT person and their tech support, right? Okay. A is for assess. What does that mean? We want to assess whether our child has incurred a significant learning loss and if there's any gaps in their knowledge. So I just recommend if you are noticing that they're struggling in certain areas, then you can do some assessments on your own, whether it's through a website or an app, pay attention to the test scores they're bringing home from school and determine, does my child need additional support in any subject area or maybe overall? Joanne, R is for refocusing on routines. Tell us what that means. Well, as I mentioned before, with younger kids, routines can be super helpful. So now's the time to really establish a routine based on your reflection of what worked and what didn't work. So some things to incorporate, definitely some movement and exercise. That's great first thing in the morning to really get those bodies and brains awake. Um, establishing snack times because hungry brains can't learn either. Uh, break times, just ensuring you're getting everything that you want to get in and during the day. And lastly, N is for network. What does that mean? 
Yes. Well, as we saw, it was challenging. So I really, my message to parents is that you don't have to do it alone. So obviously you can look to apps and websites for a lot of helpful information and resources, but also look to your own personal network, your friends, your family members who may be able to help support you emotionally when you're talking about the stress of, of having to homeschool your child. And may, maybe also they're able to help with the academics. If there's someone in your family who's good at math, for example, and you find your child struggling, really reaching out to that network. Joanne, this has been excellent. Thank you so much for joining us and really helping to ease some of the worries that parents have during this very hectic time. We'll be right back.